Yeah. G'day everyone. Welcome back to uh, the Wheelchair Sports New South Wales Facebook page for Rolling Conversations. This is episode two and uh, we're really thrilled to have um, one of the champions of our community um, here at Wheelchair Sports, Riley Batt, the co-captain of the Paralympic team and a stalwart of the uh, both the Australian Steelers and the New South Wales Gladiators. So Riley, welcome to Rolling Conversations. Cheers, mate. That was a nice intro. <laughs> you like that? Does stall yeah. make you feel old or how does that sort of hit you? It does, it does a little bit, um, but I'll, I'll take it. I've never been called that before. <laughs> there you <laughs> <Thank> go. You. <laughs> There's a first for everything. Um, mate, as I say, it's a real thrill to have you. The, the idea behind Rolling Conversations really is to keep our community connected. Yeah. Um, uh, as you know, um, the disability community can be um, isolated at the best of times for a whole bunch of reasons, but particularly, obviously, at the moment with forced isolation, um, we're trying to really make sure that we connect as a community. So um, we're thrilled to have you in that. And so they can send through questions and um, ideas. So please, if you're watching us online, do send through your questions for Riley and we'll get to them. Um, keep them clean, obviously. Um, but Riley, uh, I mentioned in the start that you are the co-captain, along with the extraordinary Danny Dottorio of the um, Australian Paralympic team. Um, for you, there must have been a big adjustment period there, was there, when when the when the Paralympics were delayed a year? How did you handle that news? Yeah, it was. Um, you know, this coronavirus is, is terrible. Um, you know, worldwide, it's absolutely terrible, and. There's, there's so many people out there at the moment, you know, having big struggles. And, um, you know, so for us just to have our event, the Paralympic Games delayed one year, I think it's it's a small fish in a big ocean. Um, you know, yeah, we would much prefer, prefer it to be this year. I know there's a lot of athletes out there who are peaking and, you know, looking to retire after the Games. And I think it hits them the most. Um, and I, I do feel for a lot of athletes like that, uh, Myself, personally, I've taken it fairly well. Our team, our wheelchair rugby team has taken it fairly well. Um, I think um, we can use this next year to be better, better athletes, better people and and be stronger in 2021. Yeah, great. And, and do you, as the co-captain, do you have a role in, in, to play there, both perhaps for your own wheelchair rugby team, but for the broader Paralympic team as well? Yeah, I guess the, uh, the Paralympic team stuck with me for an extra year now, aren't they? Um, so, yeah, it's challenging. I, I spoke to the great man, Kurt Fernley, um, last week about it all, and he said, well, this is this is, this is is what captains are about, and um, it's time to step up. So um, it's really, you know, Kurt's a mentor to me, so uh, it's great to hear those words from him. And um, Danny and I have, have taken it on well, and um, you know, we're here for support. We're here to help the, the whole Australian Paralympic community, and, to, to help them through it if they are struggling with the with the postponement of the games, but you know, in my eyes, we just need to look at look at it that it's it, we're just glad it's not cancelled at this stage, and to have it postponed one year, um, I think we can swallow that, and we can just be better people in that year and better athletes. Yeah, great. And for those um, that follow your socials, which we do uh, at Wheelchair Sports, we see you training the house down really up there, and. Um, can you tell us a bit about your setup there and what you're doing in isolation to, to maintain your health and your fitness? Yeah, it might come out of it fitter than ever. Uh, who knows? Um, look, it is hard to, to get the motivation training from home. You can get very distracted. You can get distracted very easy. But, um, um, you know, I've been lucky enough. I've uh, sort of trained from home before in Christmas breaks and whatnot. So I'm sort of used to it. So I've got a just a, a hand crank, what I think is a fantastic tool for people in wheelchairs. It's a great uh, form of exercise and it gets your heart rate very, very high. Um, but also I've got a lot of TheraBand um, and sort of just your basic gym equipment. I have just purchased a few cable machines for uh, in my, uh, my gym room that I'm looking forward to using um, because, you know, who knows how long we're going to, we're going to be uh, in lockdown. But um, so far, um, you know, the only thing I'm missing out on is that competitive edge and, you know, that's playing games. So everyone's going to be in the same um, circumstance as us. Yeah, great. And, and is there someone that can train in isolation in, in terms of, um, you know, there'd be some people that really need to feed off the energy of a team? Um, you know, where do you sit there? Are you, are you comfortable training on your own or do you prefer the environment where there's more people around? 
oh, hands down, you'd love, I'd love to train with, um, you know, my teammates and, you know, that's why we play sport. It's for the community. It's, you know, it's, it's making friends. It's that camaraderie. It's, it's all those things. And I definitely miss, um, that on my day in my daily training, but you know, this is the cards we're dealt at the moment. Um, and you know, just have to deal with it, pump up that music, make it really loud and, and train the house down at home. Um, and then, you know, we will come out of this and we will be better and stronger. And, um, and I think we'll appreciate the little things in life a lot more. Yeah, great. Well said. And and just so we know, what tunes are pumping around Riley Bat's house when you're uh, when you're letting rip? Oh, geez, um, I might embarrass myself here, but I, I do yeah. listen to a bit. You're of in a safe place, mate. There's yeah. no one watching you. Good. No, I'm a massive country music fan. I love my country music. I, I do cop a bit from that, but um, that's my music just to, when I'm driving, when I'm chilling out. But I think a little bit of Aussie hip hop or. 70s or 80s rock when I'm um, when I'm doing a bit of a workout. It's a bit of a mix. Depends what mood I'm in. Yeah, sure. Now we asked Louise Savage on Tuesday whether you know she's a singer and what her karaoke songs are. Do you sing along then with your country music tunes, mate? Ah, uh, no, no way. <laughs> sure. I've, um, we've been to a few Japanese karaoke's um, after a few competitions, and I try one song and then realise how bad I am, Mick, and. It's, um, yeah, definitely am not a karaoke singer at all. Leave it to the pros. <laughs> yeah. And I, as, as most people are aware, uh, at Wheelchair Sports New South Wales, we've had um, GIO as part of the Suncorp Group as our um, as uh, sponsors, incredible partners of our work over more than 10 years. And um, some will know, but some won't know, that you actually work for Suncorp uh, as well. Um, so interested to know, you know, working from home, for example, for Suncorp, You've probably been doing that, given you're based in Port Macquarie, you've probably worked remotely for a long time. Is that fair to say? And if so, can you give us a few tips on working from home? Mate, yeah, I've been lucky enough um, to work for Suncorp or, or GO now for seven years and it's it's been fantastic. Um, it's allowed me to, um, you know, train at this elite level and represent my country and, you know, captain my team and co-captain the Oz Paralympic team but still have that um, work from home ability. So um, fantastic company. Um, I seriously consider myself so lucky working for them. So been with them for seven years now and um, I'm not planning on leaving. Um, they, they, they've they taken me in with open arms and just been really supportive, yeah. Yeah, great. And how do you work from home? You've got, you've got the setup perhaps away from the family. You've got your little home office there. What, what does it look like? Pretty much where I'm at right now, mate. I'm at my computer right now. Um, yeah, it, look, it can be hard working from home, um, but it's it's what I'm used to. Yes, I do travel to Brisbane and Sydney offices occasionally um, to, to see my teammates um, at Suncorp. But um, yeah, I, I, I sort of I was ready for this lockdown. I guess working from home, I'm being prepared for it. But you know, work, working from home is, is good for me because it allows me then to, you know, duck off the training and, and then come back and I can work flexible hours around my training and catch up hours and catch up days when I've been uh, international or interstate. So um, really works for me um, and it allows me to, yeah, as I said, train and also to get my recovery done after training as well because us athletes sometimes, um, you know, time isn't, on our side i know a lot of people think you know athletes just have to train but we also have to do recovery and um virtual sort of you know um video video sessions uh, of our opponents so it's not just the training side of things it's a lot more yeah great now we usually um keep the questions a little bit later but we've got a good one here from steve loader who's the um the new ceo of um, sport new south wales you'll know steve of course very well um, and he's asking about the current Steelers team and, and whether all members will go on to next year or whether there are perhaps newcomers that might get an opportunity to, with the delay in the next 12 months. Uh, it's a good question, Steve. Um, it's a hard one. I, I think the, the team that we have now is a, we're, we're growing as a team. Um, we're a very close, uh, sorry, close group of um, athletes and we're getting along very well. So... I've had a, spoke, uh, a chat to a few of the players and it sounds like um, everyone wants to stick on to 2021. You know, it's when you're, when you're a Paralympian, it's, you know, the, the Paralympic Games are every four years. So you dedicate so much of your life for that four years. So for us just to be now just another year delayed, I think we can hold off that extra year. So 
I think most of the players will stay on, but it would be very good to see some new blood come through and push uh, us players who have sort of almost cemented the spot. I'd love to see new players push us uh, and try to cement their spot. Yeah, great. Now, um, you've been uh, described as an adrenaline man, um, (laughs) and I think that tag sits pretty comfortably with you. You're you're a four wheel uh, four wheeler man. You're you know you're into your motorbikes all the rest. So I'm interested. Where did that come from? Like, have you inherited that from somewhere, or is that just you? Mate, um, yeah, definitely love my adrenaline. Um, love being outdoors. And um, for me, uh, my nan and pop um, created this fantastic family farm for us on the Hawkesbury River in Sydney, uh, and it's just a place that. I spent all my school holidays and any time I could up there or down there, I should say. And my pop bought me a motorbike when I was about three and a half years old and sort of said, jump on it. And I learned how to ride, uh, sorry, a quad bike at the time and sort of got me skiing behind a boat. And so he sort of forced me or not forced me, but, you know, invited me to these kind of sports um, and activities. And I just absolutely love them, mate. So I've been doing it ever since. I've now got a lot of motorbikes in the shed and we've got a boat and I take my kids out now skiing and um, that's just how I was brought up. I just I love anything fast pace and uh, anything where there's a risk to stack and hurt yourself. And, um, yeah, I, I'm still doing it. And I've actually got plans. Well, my, sort of, my plans next year have sort of – been broken a bit now but i was planning on racing the fink desert race next year in the middle of australia um on a quad bike so that would have been interesting and i was just starting to get organized with that for post tokyo but hey it looks like that's been canned now because the games are more important <laughs> yeah indeed now we're gonna um we've got um a few more people joining us online uh lynn g'day lynn says hello to everybody um we've also got andrew tebbett there asking uh, how do you keep your beard so majestic I don't think it's very majestic, mate. It's uh, I struggle to grow a bit at the best of times, but I've got to make up for this chrome dome. You'd uh, you'd hear me there, Mick. You're amongst friends, mate. Yep. <laughs> yeah, good. Now we were talking about adrenaline sports, but in contrast to that too, and I don't want to damage your man brand here, but you are actually also a veggie gardener, um, and we we promised people we'd touch on this, but um, yeah, tell us about that. Have you got a, a, a specific patch out the back there, or how does that work? Yeah, it's not something I'm uh, happy to talk about on a forum like this, but I'll, I'll do it anyway. Right <laughs> nah, look, um, yeah, we look. My my plan in life is to live um, fully self sufficiently um, on a couple of hundred acres. That's my goal in life, and I'm starting to build the skills now to try to to try to do that. And um, where I live now, I'm on a few acres, and um, my grandfather in law. Um, taught me how to grow veggies. Uh, he had a property at Bow Desert and now has um, some space here in Port Macquarie and I've sort of taken a bit of a liking to it. It's it's a bit of a relaxation and uh, my wife's also vegetarian so to try to support her, we like to grow all our own food and we've got you know, plenty of chickens and we get all our own eggs every day. So um, I've enjoyed it. It's definitely a struggle. Um, you have to learn so much about it, you know, with, with all your seasons and um stuff like that but hey so far i've um i think i'm doing okay i've got a lot of work to to be (laughs) self-sufficient what what veggies you got in at the moment mate tell us what what's what's a good growing season for at the moment mate i'm just preparing for winter now so your winter would be more your your broccoli your cauliflowers your snow peas um you know maybe some of your root vegetables like your carrots onions um, potatoes i've got sweet potatoes in but um, yeah, still got a few summer veggies in. I've still got the tomatoes kicking on and, and stuff like that. But at the moment, um, everything's sort of just growing and we, yeah, as I said, changing season. So just smashing the lettuce and the baby spinach at the moment every day. Nice. <laughs> nice. Hey, um, you mentioned chooks. We've actually got, uh, and, and you may well know, um, of a young man from Bathurst called Warwick Holmes. They call him the rooster. And he's a, <laughs> he's a, he's a terrific young bloke, a, a chook breeder. From Bathurst, uh, only in, in his early teens, but also a wheelchair racer, and he did the GIO Ausday 10K uh, this year for the first time ever, and completed it. He's an amazing young man, but he's a chook breeder. Um, what makes a good chook breeder, and are you any good at it? I'm not a chook breeder, but I'll be coming to him to get some new chooks when I need when I need some more. But um, hmm. no, we've just got I think oh, seven or eight chooks, not many at all, mate. Um, just enough to 
you know, support us with eggs. And as I said, the wife's a vegetarian. So, you know, her diet consists mainly of vegetables and she loves her eggs. You know, that's where she gets a lot of her protein and, and natural fat. So, um, yeah, I, I've enjoyed it. Um, they can be messy buggers, but, um, you know, it's just, I love pets. I love animals. And it's been interesting learning different skills along the way to try to, I guess, accomplish my um, goal of being self-sufficient out in whoop whoop somewhere. <laughs> yeah, nice. And uh, Riley, you mentioned earlier that you're a dad too. I think you've got two teenage daughters. Um, interested in that. How, how did being a dad change you? Do, you? do you remember? I mean, they're in their teenage years now, but um, interested in what, what that was like as a, as a life-changing uh, uh, opportunity for you. Uh, yeah, so that's a hard one for me to answer, to be honest. So, yeah, two, two step girls, teenage girls who have been, uh, been in their life now for about 11 or 12 years. Um, mm. They're turning 16 and 14 this year. It's crazy. But um, I, I think it's been good for me, to be honest. Um, you know, meeting my wife and the two girls, Lily and Ali, has been fantastic. It's um, sort of kept me grounded and sort of taught me the real true values of life. So um, definitely stopped me from you know, going out with my friends and, and partying and um, traveling the world too much and stuff like that and actually kept me at home and training. And I think it's been really good, to be honest. And they're really supportive of what I do. Um, but they also, as I said, keep me grounded and make sure, um, you know, you don't get too big headed and, um, yeah, too proud of your achievements, I guess. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so, so you love your wheelchair rugby, obviously, and you've been playing for many years now. Just interested outside of wheelchair rugby and and obviously some of the adrenaline sports. Do you follow any other sports? Here? You know, have you have you got a footy team? You know, what do you what what do you watch outside of your own sport? Any sport, any sport. To be honest, um, I love any sport, especially if um, Australia is is represented. Um, but my favourite sport is Supercross. What a lot of people yeah. wouldn't watch, but um, American Supercross is huge. So I'm a little bit devastated that that's been shut down, but. You know, of course, I like my Aussie sports too. Um, NRL, probably probably a bit uh, NRL over AFL just because I was brought up um, in, you know, sort of more northern New South Wales here near Port Macquarie. So um, follow the Cronulla Sharks. Uh, we had a very good year in 2016, mm. but I uh, haven't had much else to cheer about. <laughs> yeah, we should have cleared that as a Parramatta supporter prior to the conversation. Things have now just got awkward. But nonetheless, we'll push on. <laughs> we'll push on, mate. That's fine. No issue. I weren't going to um, top the ladder before the season finished, were you? Oh, second... Top the race. Yeah, yeah. We're minor <laughs> premiers. That's right. That's right. Um, we've got a couple of questions. Do your chickens have names and are there other, <laughs> any other animals or pets? Oh, it's a touchy subject, to be honest. Um, we've just had to put one of our dogs down, my, my big mate, Butch, um, who was just 60 years old. I had to put him down yeah, for right. you three weeks ago. So that hurt me because, um, mm. you know, working from home and being home uh, a lot of the time, um, he was my best mate. So yeah, unfortunately, you know, these things happen, but um, we've got a little dog too. And I wasn't a fan of little dogs. We've got a little dog called Teddy, it's a cavoodle. Um, and I wasn't a fan of little dogs considering my last dog was 55 kilos, but um, I've sort of grown a liking on this little dog and he won't leave my hip at the moment. <laughs> so yeah, yeah nice. one dog now and the chooks and I know the family wants to get another dog to, uh, another big dog because we miss our big dog, but oh, I don't know, I can't do it yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair enough too. Hey, and what, and what does life look like for you? Uh, I mean, you know, we, we hope you continue to play forever, but everyone's got you know, the end of their career at some stage. What, what Have you thought about what your career looks like um, after that? Um, what does life look like after wheelchair rugby for you? Well, GIO, I think. Um, you know, obviously they've supported me for seven years and I'm building a bit of a career out of it. So I think I'll be working for GIO. Um, hopefully, hopefully they keep me. But um, look, yeah, sport's been my life. I've been brought up around sport. I love sport. Um, you know, you've got a massive competitive nature and, I think I will be lost after I finish wheelchair rugby. Uh, I don't know when that will be, um, but I think when I finish wheelchair rugby, I, you know, playing, I, I don't think I will leave the sport 100%. I'd love to be there as someone, as a sort of a mentor or a role model and, and help develop the sport more. Um, I think that's uh, that's what I, my, where my passion would lie and I don't think I could just walk away, so to speak, away from the sport completely. Um, yeah, sure. It's still be in my heart. And, yeah, I'd just love to see another generation of fantastic athletes come through and 
and have the success that uh, we have in the last sort of eight years. So we mentioned earlier we spoke to Louise Savage on Tuesday and she's made that transition from athlete to coach. Do you think coaching's in your future? Is that something you'd contemplate? Oh, mate, I'm already, I don't have enough hair as it is. I, I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I definitely have thought about it. Um, I would like a coach, I, but I just, I couldn't picture myself doing it. I'll have to have a chat to Louise because, you know, she was a fantastic athlete and she'd watch her athletes compete and, you know, she'd want to be out there. And I think sometimes us as athletes too like to be in control of what we do. And I think sitting back on a, you know, as a coach, you've done what you can and you can just have to sit back and just watch it unfold, I guess. So that would really have to be really difficult for me, but who knows, as I get older, I might mature more and be able to accept that more. <laughs> there you go. Hey, Brendan uh, asks, um, who do you see as the main competition for medals in Tokyo? Obviously looking at the wheelchair rugby competition next year. Um, and for those of that will be watching on from back here, who should we follow? Uh, Aussies, of course. Of course. <laughs> No, it's going to be a very, very, very tough competition. Um, who knows what's going to happen now that the games are delayed another year. But um, if, they were, if they were on this year, I'll talk about that. I think if they were on this year in, in August, I think you'd have to look out for, uh, of course, America, Japan, um, Great Britain, Canada. Um, it's it's really, it's anyone's game. And I, I know a lot of people say that, but it, it dead set is it's, it's going to go down to one pointers and overtimes and it's gonna be crazy so it's gonna be a lot of pressure um i love the pressure um so i'm looking forward to that but who knows what's gonna happen in another year there might be some more con um, contenders coming through absolutely so those of us who, who've just joined us or might have joined us on the way through we're talking to riley bat um who, who who's apparently for the first time being described as a stalwart of um wheelchair rugby in australia so i'm thrilled that we're you know we've broken new ground with you um not only that but obviously a very important part of the gio new south wales gladiators our state team um and just an all-round good bloke as well as the co-captain of the paralympic team for australia so please send through your questions and we'll put them up for the last seven or eight minutes or so um philippa asks what was your most memorable moment in sport riley Oh, so many of them, um, so many moments in sport, but I don't think you can beat winning your first gold medal as a team. Um, in 2012, we won the uh, London Paralympic Games, um, wheelchair rugby, and, you know, listening to that national anthem and seeing, your, you know, your Australian flag get raised in between two other flags with the gold medal around your neck. I just, I wish I could live that moment every day of my life. Um, but unfortunately, it goes by pretty quick. But um, I'm probably going to get shot for saying that because I probably should say the day I got married to my wife, but I think she understands. <laughs> yeah. Now we're good. Um, all right. So David asks, Riley, congratulations on your career, but I would like to know who is your favourite wallaby? Interesting favorite question. Wallaby? Mm. Oh. Oh, it's, 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 there's a fair few of them. Look, I'm, I'm more of a, a league guy. I hate to admit that. Um, I do love my union, um, especially um, at a local level too. It's, just, uh, it's amazing to watch. But I, I can't go past like a Sterling Mortlock, you know, just an iconic Australian. Um, they're all, there's so many to name. You know, I think, I think the, so many of the Wallabies are just um, role models for so many so many athletes and kids growing up, you know, they, they present, they present themselves well. They, when they put on that, you know, that, that, that gold Jersey, they, they just go hard out and, um, and they're just tough men. So, um, yeah, I think Sterling would have to be up there for me. Got it. Good answer. Um, Cecilia, I, I was never more devastated than when you guys lost the world champs in Sydney. I imagine you were probably pretty devastated at that as well, mate. Um, how do you handle manage defeat? Good question. That's a good question. That is, yeah. So for us, yeah, we lost the world champs uh, in the final by one point against a very strong Japan team. Um, it hurt. It definitely hurt. And I think it hurt a lot too because um, for us, we hadn't lost a major event in about oh, six six years. So it was our first major loss. And um, I think coming into that game, we sort of thought we were going to win it as well because we beat Japan two days earlier by 15 points. So I think that hurt as well. But I think all great teams have to have a loss to get better. And um, for us, yeah, it hurt losing on home soil in a major tournament like that. But 
I think we will be a better team. And uh, we actually came out last year and played against Japan in the World Cup and beat them by one point on their home soil. So um, I, I hopefully, you know, all well, the good things we take out of it is that it actually made the sport absolutely massive in Japan. So it's it's huge over there. You know, the wheelchair rugby teams on the side of Japan Airlines planes and um, I know Tokyo Games are going to be phenomenal um, in wheelchair rugby. There's going to be so much support there, but um, I think it's made us want we want to beat them on home soil at the Paralympic Games. So it's just it sort of just give us that extra motivation. So yep, it hurt. I you know didn't like any minute of losing, but you got to lose. You can't always be at the top of your game, and you got to learn from that loss and just rebound. Yeah, sure. Hey, um, Adam says, who is your most annoying Australian teammate? You can you can choose to pass this one up if you need oh, to. I can I can give you many of names. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, I, you know, I'd have to say my my local training buddy Andrew Edmondson. He'd say the same about me. So um, I think we've got a very good love hate relationship. So um, you know, if he was listening to this, he'd probably be nodding his head, going, "Yep, I, I understand." We train every day against each other and we're both very, very competitive. So um, yeah, we get frustrated at, at times at each other, but that's just because we love what we do. <laughs> Sorry, Andrew. There we go, dropping Edmo in it. Now, Stephen's asking us for a duet. Um, now, obviously, we're running out of time, Stephen, otherwise <laughs> we'd love to, mate. That's not going to happen. But um, Sorry, mate. I could never do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks for the question, though, Stephen. Uh, Alison says, how did it feel to be picked as co-captain of the Australian Paralympic team. For those that saw the footage, it was an incredible moment. You might describe it for everyone. I think you were with Kurt Fernley at the time. Yeah, so many people said to me after seeing the footage that they're like, oh, geez, you, you, you acted that well. Um, I absolutely, I had no idea. And Kurt just called me in for a chat on camera and I, I, that was the last thing on my mind, co-captain. Like, never even thought of it in a million years. And when he hit me, hit me with it, I... I, I I thought he was joking. I thought it was a prank, to be honest, and I didn't know how to take it. Um, but, yeah, it's it's a surreal feeling. It's It, it took a while to sink in and really, re like, to realise what an amazing um, sort of, th you know, thing this is from, you know, you're getting better from your peers. It's, so, you know, to be thought of like that from your peers, it's just, it's an amazing. And to co-captain with Danny DeToro, who's an absolute legend in Paralympic sport in Australia and just an all-around awesome Awesome chick. Um, I'm, I'm very proud. I'm very proud. I, I hope I can sort of do Australia proud and um, and be a good co-captain. But uh, yeah, I'm just very proud, and I just I can't wait for Tokyo 21. I just can't wait to to rally the troops and 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 show my energy, and hopefully people can feed off my energy. Awesome. I think we've got, probably got time for one more question. Besides yourself, uh, Lynn asks, who are the best wheelchair rugby athletes? Who, for those perhaps that don't follow the sport, who are the names that we can write down in our little black book and follow um, come Tokyo next year? Oh, there's so many. That's a, that's a really tough one. Um, it, it's a hard one too because in our sport there's different classifications um, with different functions. So you have a high pointer who looks like they're doing all the work and that's why I guess I can get a lot of glory from looking like I'm doing the work, but it's the guys who have a bit less function than me who are actually doing all the blocking and all the tactical work. So uh, in Australia, look out for, of course, you've got your Chris Bond, who's got the same classification as me. He's a you know very strong, powerful man. Much as I said before, he's my uh, least favorite teammate, I guess, Edmo. <laughs> he's uh, Edmo, um, you know, probably wouldn't admit it to him, <laughs> but he's a, he's a, Awesome player for his classification. He's um, he's just he switched on. He he knows what he's doing, and we're very glad to have him on our team. But in Australia, we've also got uh, a low pointer like Ben Fawcett, who's a zero point five from Victoria. He is he's coming on very very quick, and he's got some brains, and he's got a little bit of grit about him, and he he likes to talk a bit of smack too. So I like that. <laughs> yeah, good. But what, look, worldwide, there's there's so many of them, and. You know, Zach Medell from Canada, who's, um, you know, we battle a bit. Um, good friends, though. Um, he's, a, he's a very fast, phenomenal player and um, very young, too. But, look, I could sit here and talk about, you know, so many players. But um, I guess, yeah, in Australia, we've got some fantastic players. But not only that, a great team that hopefully is going to pull us through to a gold medal in uh, Tokyo 2021. Sounds a bit weird. 
Well said. Hey, uh, we're, we're going to finish up shortly. Um, Riley, I, I did want to say thank you again. Um, as I say, you're a really important part of our community at Wheelchair Sports New South Wales. It's a thrill to have you with us. Uh, there'd be a bunch of people in our community out there at the moment about to go into the Easter long weekend, um, four days, feeling isolated, uh, perhaps at different times lacking a bit of motivation to, to keep their training up for whatever sport they're training for at the moment or really just to keep keep healthy. I just wondered if you had a message for our the members of our community out there over the Easter long weekend and through these periods of isolation. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, for me personally, I just... You know, I think we're gifted with, you know, what we've got. I know a lot of people look at us with our sort of our, about our disability, but we've got to look at our, at our abilities and what we can do and, and you know, what we can build on. So for me personally, I make sure I train every day. And that's not just because I represent Australia and I'm a captain. You know, that's extra motivation. But, you know, I've got, you know, I've still got ability. Yes, I'm missing legs and a few fingers, but... I can get out there and do stuff. So I'm out. I'm out in the garden every day. You know, shoveling. I'm in the in the garage at the moment on either a fitness bike or even just using therabands to do a strength session. Um, it's still exercise, and you know, I encourage everyone out there just to utilize what they've got. Um, there's so much stuff at home you can utilize. Look at videos on YouTube to learn how to exercise at home, and just make the most of the day. You know, once you've smashed that workout, half an hour, an hour a day. And you, you feel better, you feel more energetic and you, you feel like you can achieve more. But it is very hard in this isolation at the moment, but we're just got to think, you know, there's plenty of other people out there a lot worse off than us at the moment. And we're just going to sort of make the most and, and keep positive. Yeah, well said, mate. Well, but I hope we get to enjoy a, a plate of Rolly Vats veggies um, soon. Um, thanks for spending time with Rolling Conversations. As I say, the idea is to connect our, our community online. I, I want to say thank you to everyone that's watched. Um, tonight as well, um, that's thrown some questions our way. Uh, next Tuesday, we're going to have John McLean um, with us, who is, an, is a freak from an athletic point of view and done so many incredible things He's across a whole variety of sports. Pardon me? He's a store horse, isn't he? He's a store horse. There, I might use that again. Um, but, mate, as I say, thank you to everyone that's watched us online. Um, Riley, thank you to you, mate. Stay healthy, um, and we can't wait to see you rip in in Tokyo next year. Thanks, Mick. And everyone, have a good long, long weekend. All right, stay safe. Cheers, mate. Thanks a lot. Cheers, guys. See you later.